어서 오세요. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to dive into a fascinating part of Korean history that not many people outside Korea know about. The military rule during the Goryeo dynasty. This period of military dominance dramatically shaped Korea's history. So let's get started. To understand the military rule, we first need to talk a little about the Goryeo dynasty itself. The Goryeo dynasty lasted from 918 to 1392 and it's where the name Korea comes from. Goryeo, Korea. Goryeo was a powerful kingdom that unified the Korean peninsula after the fall of the Silla dynasty. Its capital was located in Gaesong in present-day North Korea. And it became well known for its art, culture, and the creation of the famous Goryeo Celadon pottery. Goryeo had a complex political system that involved both civil officials and military leaders. For a long time, civil officials, mostly scholars, held the most power in the government. But this balance of power was about to shift dramatically. During the Goryeo dynasty, military officials were often treated as second class compared to the civil scholars. Despite their important role in defending the kingdom, military officers were paid less, had fewer privileges, and were often humiliated by the scholars who controlled the government. This unfair treatment led to growing resentment among the military. The situation came to a head in 1170 during the reign of King Uijong when the military led by General Chong Jungbu, Chong Jungbu and others decided to take matters into their own hands. This event is known as the military coup of 1170. After the coup, military leaders seized control of the government, starting what we call the military rule period. King Uijong was dethroned, and for the next 100 years, the real power in Goryeo was held by military rulers, not kings. One of the key events that triggered this military coup was an incident between a young civil official and an elderly military officer. According to historical records, the young civil official slapped the elderly general during a banquet. This act of public humiliation perfectly illustrated how the civil class disrespected the military despite the military's important role in protecting the kingdom. For many military officials, this was the final straw that led them to revolt. This single act of disrespect sent shock waves through the military ranks and fueled the growing resentment. It symbolized the deep-rooted inequality between the two classes and shortly after, military leaders led by General Chong Jungbu took control by force. One of the most well-known figures during this period was General Choi Chung Hun, who became the de facto ruler of Goryeo. Under his leadership and later his descendants, the military leaders held absolute power while the kings were reduced to figureheads. So what was life like during this time? For many ordinary people, the changes in leadership didn't affect their daily lives too much. However, there were frequent power struggles within the military ranks. Different factions fought for control, leading to political instability and occasional violence. One of the more notable events was the Mongol invasions of Korea. The military government had to deal with these external streets uh, while also trying to maintain control within the kingdom. The Mongol Empire was incredibly powerful and after years of fighting, Korea became a vassal state of the Mongols. 
The military rule eventually weakened due to both internal conflict and pressure from the Mongol invasions. By the late 13th century, the Che family's power began to decline and the central royal authority was gradually restored. The kings of Korea regained control, but the dynasty itself was weakening due to internal corruption and external threats. In 1270, after nearly a century of military rule, the monarchy officially took back power. However, Korea's independence was short-lived. The dynasty would eventually fall in 1392, which is very historical year, replaced by the Joseon dynasty, which would go on to rule Korea for over 500 years. Even though the military rule ended, it left a lasting mark on Korean history. This period showed the tensions between civil and military officials and how unstable leadership could make a country vulnerable to external threats like the Mongols. What should we learn from this period of history? One important lesson is that we should never divide or judge people based on their professions. Of course, we are talking about jobs that involve self-development and contribution to society. In the end, each of us plays a role in society, and it's these roles that help us move forward together. Just because someone holds a higher position doesn't mean they have the right to look down on others or humiliate them. Actions that degrade others or use status as a tool for superiority should never be acceptable. If you strip away titles, we're just neighbors. After all, all working to make our community and society better. This was a lesson Korea's history teaches us. Social harmony and mutual respect are crucial for any society to thrive. The imbalance and abuse of power during the military rule caused chaos and suffering, a reminder of what can happen when we fail to respect one another as equals. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this look into the Korea dynasty's military rule interesting. If you'd like to learn more about Korean history, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. 또 오세요!